The Byzantine Empire lasted over 1,100 years, making it the only Western Empire stretching from the ancient period to the early modern era. And if you thought cancel culture was a recent thing, wait till you meet Constantine V. The Byzantine Empire was a time of opulence, change, and a longing for tradition. They began as the eastern half of the Roman Empire, but when the West fell to the Goths, the Byzantine Empire suddenly found itself alone as the rest of Europe descended into the Dark Ages. This empire helped carry many Roman traditions into the modern era and blended Christianity with their secular philosophy. They created great legal codes and beautiful artwork, but the Byzantine Empire also had a dark side. Not all the emperors were as inspiring as Constantine or Justinian. In fact, some were awful and ended up hurting the empire. Here are five of the worst emperors who ruled the Byzantine Empire. Number 1. Constantine V One of the first internal conflicts that threatened to tear the Byzantine Empire apart was iconoclasm, which was the destruction of all Christian images. The people decorated their churches with beautiful artwork, including paintings of people like the Virgin Mary and Jesus. These images were meant to help the people focus their devotion. After the Islamic forces inflicted devastation on the empire, the people wondered why God had punished them. Emperor Leo III decided that God was punishing the empire for idolatry. He ordered the destruction of all religious icons, starting the iconoclasm movement that disrupted the realm for many years. It even led to conflict between the Western and Byzantine churches. Although Emperor Leo III had caused division, his son was even worse. Emperor Constantine V took the throne in 741 CE. Although he was a deft military commander, his policies surrounding iconoclasm threatened to destroy the Byzantine Empire and widen the gap between the Byzantine Church and the Western Church. Constantine V was even more aggressive in eradicating icons than his father. He was soon attacking patriarchs and monks. He forced the Byzantine Church to support his strong views against icons by only letting fellow iconoclasts share their opinion in a large council. Once the group announced that icons and relics were idolatry, Constantine V continued destroying traditional art and historical artifacts. He humiliated anyone who dared stand in his way and appropriated the strongest monasteries for his military, which involved throwing out the nuns and monks who lived there. Constantine continued to enrage people both inside and outside the empire. Soon, the people forgot his other achievements and only remembered Constantine V as the hated emperor who had destroyed their religious art, forcibly changing how the people were allowed to worship. Number 2. Empress Irene After Constantine died in 775 CE, his son, Leo IV, came to the throne, but he died in 780 CE, shortly after taking the throne. Leo's son, Constantine VI, was not old enough to rule so his mother stepped in as the empress. Although Empress Irene was renowned for her beauty, she quickly proved herself to be power-hungry and one of the worst emperors of the Byzantine Empire. However, Irene was not wholly evil. She did work to end the first period of iconoclasm. She moved iconoclasts out of powerful governmental and military positions and then called together many of the patriarchs. Together, they finally denounced iconoclasm, restoring the practice of decorating church buildings with art as long as the people agreed not to worship the images. After accomplishing her main goal, Irene turned her attention to maintaining her political power. She technically should have only ruled for six years, but when Constantine VI turned 16, she did not give up the throne. Irene was not content to lead from the shadows, but some people grew uncomfortable with her insistence on her own power. She even executed some of her generals for disagreeing with her right to rule, and she placed her son in prison so that he would not threaten her power. The soldiers rebelled and insisted that Constantine VI take the throne. However, he quickly proved himself weak and unambitious, displeasing the people. Irene spent some time under house arrest but was not gone from the political scene. By 797 CE, she had regained enough power to order Constantine VI to be blinded and executed after his infant son died. Although this heartless act should have secured her position as empress, it did not stabilize the empire or significantly extend her time on the throne, partially because of politics with Western Europe. On Christmas Day 800 CE, Pope Leo III crowned Charlemagne Holy Roman Emperor, 
sending shockwaves across Europe and the Byzantine Empire. The Byzantine Empire believed they were the Roman Empire's legacy. They took great pride in preserving Roman customs, laws, and philosophy. The Byzantine aristocracy revolted when Charlemagne offered to marry Irene and unite their empires. They banished Empress Irene from the realm and chose a new emperor, finally ending her reign. Although it started by ending iconoclasm, it did not have the healing effects the empire desperately needed. Instead, Irene used the imperial throne to solidify her power instead of focusing on helping the people recover from the chaos and destruction iconoclasm had left behind. Number 3. Nicephorus Thankfully, the Byzantine Empire had time to recover from Emperor Constantine V and Empress Irene. It again expanded and soon had a new dynasty, the House of Macedon. However, when Emperor Romanus II died in a hunting accident, his wife, Teofano, was in a difficult situation. Her son was too young, but unlike Irene, Teofano did not want to take the throne herself. Instead, she called on Nicephorus Phocas to protect her and her son because he was the best general the Byzantine Empire had seen in many years. The Patriarch crowned him emperor by popular demand, and he soon married Teofano, despite being at least 30 years older than her. Nicephorus was a celebrated general, especially in his campaign against the Islamic forces. However, he was different than other recent emperors, which turned public favor against him. As a military man, he gave orders but was also rude, especially if someone aggravated him, and he had a short temper. His lack of political tact caused several international incidents. He almost started a war with the Germanic tribes by locking Emperor Otto I in the dungeon for accidentally calling Nicephorus the king of the Greeks instead of the Byzantine emperor. Nicephorus also believed the church was corrupt. It possessed great land and wealth and did not pay taxes, both of which Nicephorus thought unacceptable. He spent his reign trying to end church power and corruption by not allowing people to donate land to the church. By the end of his reign, the people no longer focused on his great military exploits. Instead, they were angry about the growing taxes, and the church refused to work with him. There were even rumors that Nicephorus's brother had attempted to kill the legitimate princes, for whom Nicephorus was only supposed to be a regent. Yet the emperor did nothing to either disprove the rumors or punish his brother. Almost everyone hated Emperor Nicephorus, including his young wife, Teofano. She took John Samiscus, another rising general and Nicephorus' nephew, as her new lover, and they organized the murder of Nicephorus together. Although he did help strengthen the Byzantine emperor militarily, Emperor Nicephorus was highly unpopular with the people, and his domestic policies and lack of political tact made him one of the worst emperors who ruled the Byzantine Empire. Number 4. Alexius Comnenus After the House of Macedon dynasty faded into history, the Byzantine Empire went through a time of instability. A series of weak rulers damaged the economy and military. This time also saw the Great Schism of 1054, when the Catholic and Eastern Orthodox churches finally split. The tensions between the two groups have been growing for centuries. However, the official split had repercussions that we are still dealing with today. Alexius Komnenus stepped into all this chaos. His family had always competed with the Macedonian family, but Alexius's reign had problems from the start. He overthrew his predecessor in 1081, and the mercenaries he hired to help him looted Constantinople at once. The event did not win him any favors with the people. Then the Normans arrived, landing uncomfortably close to the capital. Alexius decided to march his army against the Normans, but his army consisted of the Varangian Guard and mercenaries, some of whom were Turkish and betrayed the Byzantines. The Normans beat the military soundly, reducing Alexius's power even further. Thankfully, Alexius wasn't wholly incompetent, when the Normans returned, he decided not to risk the few soldiers he had left and instead tried diplomacy. He used his relations with the Germans and the Venetians to cut off Norman supplies, eventually forcing them to leave. It appeared that Alexius had finally found a way to protect the Byzantine Empire and give it a time to recover. However, there were other threats, and the other significant threat during his reign came from the Seljuk Turks. Alexius knew he would need help again to defend his empire against the Turks, so he reached out to Pope Urban in 1095, asking for Christian soldiers to help drive back the threat. In response, the Pope announced the First Crusade. This did not work out well for Alexius, 
and was the beginning of several years of problems. Many knights and peasants responded to the Pope's call, but refused to listen to Alexius. For a while, it seemed like they were more of a threat to Constantinople than the Turks. Despite the issues around the First Crusade, it was one of the more successful ones. The Crusaders did manage to take Jerusalem for a short time in 1099, but the knights refused to give the conquered land to Alexius. Instead, they set up small kingdoms for themselves, increasing hostility between the Byzantine Empire and Western Europe. Alexius wanted to protect his empire and give it time to recover, but his choices did not help in the long run. The army was depleted, and Alexius accidentally started the Crusades, a series of religious wars that would end up hurting the Byzantine Empire more than Alexius Comnenus had ever imagined. Number 5. Alexius IV The Comnenus family continued to stir up chaos in the Byzantine Empire, mainly because many of their rulers were ineffective. They soon gave way to the Angelus family, but that family was even less effective. Isaac II Angelus came to the throne in 1185, quickly proving that he did not know how to run an empire. While Western Europe called another crusade to take back Jerusalem from the Muslim forces, Isaac weakened the Byzantine position by dismissing the imperial navy and imprisoning the German ambassadors. Finally, his brother Alexius III saw his chance. He overthrew his brother and locked Isaac and his son in prison, claiming the throne for himself. Alexius III was only interested in the throne for its wealth and power, and he soon attracted a few enemies who thought Isaac's son might be a better ruler. When the Fourth Crusade arrived at Zara, they found Alexius IV waiting for them. He offered them large amounts of money if they came to help him reclaim the throne from his uncle. The Crusaders were already sidetracked when they went to Zara so many decided that one more excursion couldn't hurt. They marched to Constantinople and surrounded the city, causing Alexius III to flee. It seemed they had been victorious. However, Alexius III had spread rumors and lies about Alexius IV and his father, creating distrust and making them very unpopular with the people. Additionally, Alexius IV did not have money to give the Crusaders for their help, which angered them. They changed tactics and instead sacked Constantinople, looting tombs, churches, and anything else they could find. It was the first time Constantinople had ever failed to defend itself, and the empire would never be the same again. In his bid for power, Alexius IV became one of the worst Byzantine emperors because his actions led to the first sack of Constantinople, weakening the empire and leaving it vulnerable to destruction. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history? Impress your friends? and predict the future more accurately based on past events. If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Byzantine Empire, check out our book, The Byzantine Empire, A Captivating Guide to Byzantium and How the Eastern Roman Empire Was Ruled by Emperors Such as Constantine the Great and Justinian. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.